Hi, good morning. Bonjour. Guten Tag. Thanks for uh, attending my session. And uh, thank you, uh, Checkpoint, for organizing this uh, very professional event and giving us the opportunity to present here today. Uh, my name is Riven Harrison. I'm a CTO and co-founder at Tufin Technologies. And what I'll be talking about today is orchestrating your security policies. So let's get started. So um, I know that uh, a lot of the people here have been doing security for many years. I actually know a lot of the people here in the audience who've been doing this stuff for many, many years. And I think for many people, things uh, seem pretty much um, like on a steady state, you know, monotonous. Things are pretty much the same, you know, the rule bases, the policies, the incidents, the attackers, and so forth. My point in this presentation is that um, the steady state is changing. And I'm going to give you some insights into what's really happening. Uh, there's a big change around the corner. Back. Anyway, my point was um, that I was starting to make was about the container revolution that happened in the 60s. Basically, what happened is that a huge industry went under a very major change uh, due to a technological innovation. And that technological innovation was the container. So in the 1960s, uh, the way that ships were loaded and unloaded was very, very manual. Okay, so people would carry the sacks and the barrels up to the ships, and about 50% of the merchandise would get stolen as part of the process, and the prices for shipping were very, very high. And then um, some Scottish guy out from the US um, came up with this idea to put stuff in a container and to standardize the way that shipping was done. And that caused a very major revolution to the whole shipping industry. It actually impacted a lot more than shipping. It impacted international trade. And a lot of the international ports of that time and the cities that were built around them disappeared. So Amsterdam port, for example, um, declined very quickly. And New York port declined. And um, new, new ports that were automated replaced these ports. So Rotterdam replaced Amsterdam. And New Jersey replaced New York. This is what happened between 1960 and 1975. Um, the use of containers skyrocketed, and within 15 years, it reached between 50 to 80 percent. And the impact on the industry and the trade and everything was very, very major. Okay? My point is that there was a lot of change in a very short period of time too much change, and this is what we are going to see in network security starting from right now over the next few years. So let's take a look at what's happening in network security um, and how this is going to change very, very dramatically over the next few years. Um, so network security, as we know it and as we refer to it, is very network-centric. Okay? That's the way things are today. Um, over the past 10 years or so, I think we've all seen how servers became virtualized, and I think today most of the servers um, in large enterprises are already virtualized. So people understood the, um, the benefits of that. And more recently, we've started to see cloud, whether it's private cloud or public cloud, and also the concept of looking at applications, and these applications will be distributed between private cloud, public cloud, traditional infrastructure, okay, and we need to manage all of these. What's actually driving this, this new kind of IT? Three, three major things. First of all, actually, first of all, cost, cost reduction. So the business wants to reduce costs, and the business can reduce their costs very, very significantly. So if one of our larger customers um, reduced the cost of storing images on their own servers from $2 million a year to under under $20,000 a year just by moving the, the servers to Amazon. That's a very good example of cost reduction. Um, also, efficiency and agility are also very big drivers for this revolution that's happening. So let's see what this revolution actually is. I'd say there are three things that are, three technological um, um, innovations that are driving this 
big change that is going to impact everyone in this room over the coming years. The first one is SDN. The second one is virtualization. And the third one is cloud. And obviously, all of these are very much interrelated. They're part of the same thing. And the question that I would like to discuss and answer today, perhaps, to a certain extent, is will this new kind of IT be more secure or less secure than what we've been used to? Okay, so let's very briefly try to explain each one of these technologies. So starting with virtualization, and I've actually explained server virtualization, which everyone here in this room is familiar with. Server virtualization enables us to take away the hardware dependency. So using abstraction, the server is abstracted, and we can remove the, uh, the complexity or the dependency on the um, hardware. So now we can run our operating systems and our applications on any kind of hardware. We don't care anymore if it's Dell or HP or IBM or something else. Um, by the way, virtualization refers to a lot more than servers, but we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, let's just very quickly explain what SDN is, and I assume that about half of the people here probably know something about SDN, but I'll try to explain it in one slide. Um, the idea is that the internet was uh, designed initially to be distributed, so um, traffic would route itself to, uh, through the best um, uh, route and find its way to its destination using protocols like BGP and other distributed protocols. Uh, the internet is not owned by anyone, right? Um, at least theoretically. Um, and therefore, distributed management makes a lot of sense for such an entity. But enterprises which adopted the same architecture do own their, their networks. And it doesn't make sense to have them distributed. It's very complicated to manage a distributed network. So SDN, or at least one of the ways to understand SDN is centralizing network management. Okay, and start thinking about security in this aspect as well. What happens to security if it can be centrally managed? Okay, and cloud, I think everyone here is familiar with the cloud. Um, the idea at a very high level is, is computing is a resource, just like gas, electricity, water. You need to compute something. You don't have to own the well. You don't have to create your own electricity. You can buy it from a provider. This is the same way you can provide, uh, you can buy um, compute. Okay. So, a few anecdotes about what's going on in the very large uh, disruption around cloud. First of all, we have pub public cloud and private cloud. And these are some of the major players in these spaces, which I'm sure everyone here is familiar with. In the private cloud, we have VMware NSX which is uh, relatively new, but um, they've virtualized networks just like they virtualized servers 15 years ago. Now they virtualize networks. And, a, a virtual network has the potential to change a lot of the things that are being done today in security. Um, you might have heard of OpenStack, which I like to think of as the equivalent of Linux for operating systems to cloud uh, platforms, so an open source uh, cloud management platform. Um, Cisco ACI, I'm sure a lot of people here are hearing about it, and many more. And in the public space, we have um, AWS, which is definitely uh, the most common platform, and then we have Microsoft, which is catching up really nicely, and, and many others, right? Many local cloud providers, some of them are here in this, in this room. Um, okay, another anecdote. Um, we're seeing a very interesting... Um, uh, competition evolved between VMware, which is traditionally a server, kind of the server guys know VMware from the server virtualization. Um, they're trying to enter the networking space through network virtualization. And Cisco, which is a traditional networking provider, and uh, we're seeing an interesting new kind of uh, competition evolve there. Another interesting one is obviously in the public cloud, okay? Amazon versus Microsoft. And a lot of our customers have combinations. That's pretty much one of the next points. So before I move on, I'd like to just highlight a few of the things that are happening in the security market as well, because that's also changing. Um, so cyber threats, I think the previous session was, was all about that. I don't need to expand. I think there's been enough uh, uh, information about that. 
Um, a lot of innovation going on in the security market right now. So, so you're seeing many new vendors that you've never seen before, many new types of uh, protection. So obviously IPS and APT and, and next generation firewalls are not so new anymore, but they're, they're be definitely becoming mainstream and a lot of new things are also um, um, evolving. So we have adaptive security, which is evolving nicely and it's interesting. We have context aware security, which just to give you a concrete example, is taking um, abstract terms such as IPs that don't mean anything to anyone and replacing them by, by meaningful entities such as users, right? So user awareness, um, applications, application awareness, um, geolocation, location awareness. So security is becoming a lot more aware and smarter than it used to be even five years ago. But the bottom line, and I think it should be said, is that Enterprises today are much less secure than they were 20 years ago. Much less secure. And hackers today are much more sophisticated and, and much more successful than they were five years ago. Okay? Uh, this is a research from Verizon. Um, and what they found beyond the cost is that 60% of incidents um, are attributed to errors made by system administrators. Not necessarily security administrators, but system administrators. And the question is, you guys here in this room, do you really want to have that kind of responsibility? Okay, so to summarize before we move on, what is the current state of affairs? An ever-changing security landscape. So every year, new innovations and in a growing um, frequency. A lot of vendors, a lot of technologies, very heterogeneous IT. So a lot of technologies in your enterprise networks. And this is what your IT will most likely look like if it's not already there. So in terms of complexity and being heterogeneous, physical networks will remain with Cisco and Juniper. Um, you will have traditional firewalls and next generation firewalls with all the vendors, all the typical uh, vendors, the leading vendors of the uh, uh, Magic Quadrant. You will have virtualization in servers and in networks, and you will have software-defined data centers. Um, firewalls will incorporate more types of security, like they have already, and they will continue to do so. Um, the public cloud will be provided by multiple vendors, and it also provides security. So you will have to rely on security from the public cloud. SDN, right now, mostly for service providers, but uh, maybe in the future for enterprises as well and many more types of security devices across your network. So here's a little bit kind of more concrete example of what your network might look like now or maybe in the next year, not in a long time. You will have data centers that are physical, traditional. You will have data centers that are virtualized. You will have firewalls in the data centers and at the perimeter. You will have um, cloud from multiple vendors. And you will have different kinds of security across these platforms. So this is a security that we're all familiar with, right? Subnets and zones. We, we create subnets, we arrange them into zones, security zones, and we put security controls around them. In a virtual network, it's slightly different. We can do better. We can do micro-segmentation, if anyone's heard of that. The, the idea is, because we have a virtualized network and central management, we can enforce segmentation on every single server. So the granularity of our security controls is much higher. Okay? Theoretically, we can, theoretically, we can do better security. But it's definitely different than the traditional security that we have in our physical networks. And what about the cloud, the public cloud? There's this new concept of security groups, right? So probably some of the people here have already heard about it. Maybe some of them are already deploying security in Amazon or in Microsoft Azure. And you have security groups. Security group is not such a sophisticated uh, um, uh, idea. It's just basically a group of servers that has the same access policy. That's all it is, right? But still, it's different than traditional security. And your network, your corporate network, is probably going to include all of these technologies and probably more. So very, very heterogeneous. This is a report from um, Enterprise Security Group from 2014. Hmm. But what I'm highlighting here is that network security policies 
and controls are not cohesive as they must be implemented across many different security and networking technologies. This is exactly my point. And this is the second most um, uh, important um, problem that security uh, professionals are trying to solve in enterprises. Okay, so how can we take advantage of all of this new kind of network infrastructure, network technology that's evolving to improve security? So I'm, I've taken some of the concepts of modern IT and let's see how we can apply these concepts to security. So the first one is central security management. Now this is not new, everyone's been talking about central security management, but here I mean across different platforms, okay, different platforms, traditional, cloud, private, public, SDN, perhaps, perhaps other platforms as well in the future. Um, automation for sure, and you know, this is also a very uh, central uh, concept for Checkpoint um, right now, automation and orchestration, right? How do we automate? Because IT is automated by definition, security has to be automated as well. And abstraction. The idea, the basic idea of forgetting about complex details, putting them behind an abstraction layer and dealing with them in a more uh, scalable way, managing them in a more scalable way. And this is what I refer to as modern security. This is how security is going to evolve over the coming years and it's going to be very different than it was uh, over the past 20 years. Let's talk about central security management for a moment. So IT is very heterogeneous. As we've already seen, we have different kinds of networks. We want to be able to manage all of these securities or all of these platforms from one place. Okay, abstraction. Multi-vendor is a fact. Even if you're, you know, you're, you've always been using one vendor for many, many years, your organization suddenly decides to, to merge with another organization and suddenly you own this other platform that you never dealt with before. So multi-vendor is a fact. And there will be no standard. There will be no standard across all the platforms. Um, it, one of my examples that I like to, to highlight is OpenStack. OpenStack tr tr is trying to create a standard, standard for cloud. But it doesn't look like there's going to be a standard for cloud. It looks like OpenStack is going to be one of many cloud solutions. So we need to create an abstraction on top of all of these things, uh, the networks, the technologies, the forwarding technologies, even the APIs. So we have different APIs from different vendors, okay? And this is also an important uh, point. I think networks in general are very, very complex with all the technologies that evolved over many years of um, iterative evolution of networks. And the next place up the network which makes sense to focus our security efforts is the application. Because the applications, first, are much more abstracted. They don't care about network complexity. And secondly, applications mean a lot to business. So the applications are a good place in the middle between the business and the IT. And last but not least is automation, okay? And this is a quote that I love. If you need to log into a system, you're not automating, right? If you need to log into a system, you're not properly automating your infrastructure. Okay, so manual change implementation, sorry, that's not working anymore. That's too slow, that's too expensive, that's not agile. So let's see, let's see what Tufin offers uh, as a solution to these problems or as a platform for the modern security. So first of all, we have an abstraction layer. The abstraction layer goes across physical networks with all your well-known solutions in that space, uh, private cloud and public cloud. Um, on top of that, we have a security and compliance component that can look across all of these platforms using the abstraction layer and automation. And when I say automation, I wanna emphasize that automation has to be fully automated. And I know that's a difficult concept for security people to think of because security people like control. So automating things is sometimes contradictory to um, controlling things but we'll see how that can be combined. And at last, we have the application abstraction which sits on top of everything. So start moving up the ladder, start moving away from the complex infrastructure, start thinking at a higher level, at an abstract level, which will bring you closer to the business and will make more sense as an operational solution. 
Finally, RESTful APIs, everyone has APIs. These APIs are used to automate our system. Okay. Let's see a quick demo of the abstraction layer. So this is a typical corporate network. We have a data center, we have some cloud stuff here, we have a virtualized data center as well. And we're trying to figure out connectivity here, whether it's for troubleshooting or for security or for an audit. And we have no idea how the packets are going to move between one component to another component. What we offer here is Google Maps for networks, basically. Um, we search for a checkpoint firewall here. This is our checkpoint firewall. We grab one of the networks that's connected to this checkpoint firewall, and we, um, we set it as the source. And we type in the destination, which is another server somewhere else. We don't care where it is, or we don't know where it is. We want to know how these two systems are connected, if they're connected. So there is a very complex network topology in between, and there is also security in between. What our system does is it highlights the path between the two systems. And this is actually going across a physical network with Cisco and Checkpoint, um, all the way through a, a virtualized data center with uh, VMware NSX, with its distributed firewalls and edges and so forth. Um, we can see that some of the platforms are permitting this traffic and other platforms are uh, denying this traffic. Uh, for example, the Checkpoint firewall is actually denying the traffic. We can see some uh, information about the network topology, like the interfaces and the next hops. And NAT, for instance, here we have ha NAT hide. Um, so the source is hidden behind a different um, IP address. And then if we move forwards, we can also see the rules that are blocking the traffic. In this case, rule number 26 is blocking the traffic on this specific platform, the Checkpoint Smart Center. And then we can go and look at other platforms. In this case, we have an NSX distributed firewall, which is allowing the traffic. Okay, so one central place to understand your network topology end-to-end. -to -end. Okay. Let's talk about central security management. So now we have the network abstracted. We don't care about details anymore. So first of all, um, you want to see all your platforms in one place. And you can see here in, in, in Secure Tracks dashboard, all of the platforms that we mentioned today. But now you want to start applying a security policy across everything. And the first thing you want to do is you want to define your zones, your security zones, that's right. Security zones are um, normally collections of IPs and subnets. They could reside on cloud platforms or on traditional networks. And then you can start specifying constraints for communications between the zones. For example, um, these communications must be used within the last 90 days. Why? Because they have to be PCI compliant, for example, or NERC, or because that's what I want as a security administrator. And then we can also apply um, specific PCI constraints across communications, and we can say, uh, for example, what are my PCI violations for any specific uh, platform? And here we're seeing um, some checkpoint rules that are actually breaking my PCI compliance because they're not well documented or they use risky services or any, any kind of combination. Um, SecureTrack gives you a, a central dashboard to view all of your policy violations across all platforms. And in this case, we can see some uh, um, unified security policy violations specific um, to the NSX platform. So this is the distributed firewall, which is actually uh, a normal, typical firewall rule, which is breaking PCI. Okay. And one last point, um, which was also mentioned in the previous uh, session, is visibility. How do I gain visibility across everything? And one of the nice things that we built into SecureTrack recently is the ability to see policies very quickly, like a Google search across all of your policies. So you can search using uh, sophisticated syntax, like uh, um, in this case, where are my violations? What is the la rules that, that have not been used for 90 days or rules that are shadowed? And I can see all my uh, rules and all the violations as well for every rule. OK. This is actually looking for rules that um, um, correspond to a specific ticket ID or rules that are shadowed. OK. And here we see some rules from Cisco. OK. 
let's continue and let's see automation because I think automation is the main thing. I mean, once you've put down the abstraction layer and once you've created your security policies, now you really want to automate everything across all platforms. And let's see how that's done. So Secure App is a platform, the top layer of our abstraction model, which allows you to create models or blueprints of applications. You can bring in your servers from any platform, whether it's a cloud platform or whether it's um, any other place in your network. And then you can create connectivity for your applications. In this case, we're using two servers that need to communicate with some other server in some other place, and they need to communicate over a specific um, service like HTTPS. It also could be an application, right? It could be the connectivity is required over Facebook, for example. And very quickly, the system tells you whether these servers are actually connected or not. So first of all, what is the current state of affairs? Is it connected or not? And very quickly, it tells you it's not connected, and this rule on, on this specific checkpoint firewall, the cleanup rule, is actually blocking my connectivity. And the next thing we do, once we determine this, and by the way, all of this can be automated through APIs, so there's no real need to um, um, log into here and do this manually. You can automate this completely end-to-end. You can run a quick compliance check and see that your application is, the way you've designed it is actually compliant with your policies. And now you can adjust the, the platforms to connect your application. This is very important for uh, organizations. Changes need to happen in minutes today. They cannot wait for, for weeks. Once you submit your ticket, this is the ticket, which you don't care about too much, it's done. Okay, so this is a fully automated change end to end. Basically what the system is doing now is it's running through a predefined workflow, which has automation tools inside it that are configured to run automatically. So what they will do is they will um, look at the flow, analyze the topology, analyze the policies on each platform, design the changes, push them out, document everything, end of story. Now, I know that's pushing it. I know a lot of people here uh, will not fully automate the system end to end on day one. Um, secure change gives you the flexibility to go anywhere between fully manual to fully automatic. So you can automate part of the stuff. You can go in and click buttons to do some of the things before, uh, before you, um, you know, to get kind of um, a, a view of what the changes are going to look like. Here, for example, we see how secure change picks all the relevant firewalls based on network topology. We're also seeing that it run a risk report and that the flows are actually compliant with our uh, policies. We see that there are two firewalls that need to be changed here, Checkpoint and Cisco. If we look at Checkpoint, we can actually see what needs to be done. So Secure, secure Change actually analyzes the policy, sees which rules need to be changed, which network groups need to be changed, which hosts need to be created and services. And for, for Cisco, we can actually see the command lines as well. But this is all afterthought. This is, it's already done. So the administrator can go into the system even after the change is made and see a full audit trail of everything. One last piece here, which is also interesting, is after it's done, there's a full audit trail. You can see the changes. You can see who made the changes. And you can see, in this case, how the, the change on the firewall corresponds to the change um, at the application level. So again, making the changes at the application level is taking away all the underlying complexity of the platform or the underlying platforms, and it provides very uh, rapid changes with full control. OK. So how do we achieve security policy orchestration? A lot of organizations today need to automate their changes. Why? Because business, business requires them to be automated. Not because necessarily it's more secure. It's because business requires it. So the first thing that you can do is gain visibility across all of your heterogeneous environments. So you can control the policies, you can see the policies, you can, um, you can analyze your policies in one place. The second step is to centralize management across all heterogeneous platforms. Uh, you can enforce a unified security policy across everything, and you should. You can create zones across everything and enforce that. Um, and here's back to the original example. Different platforms provide different kinds of uh, enforcement or security controls. Um, but you still want one place to manage all of these different security controls. And the third step, which is the most valuable step, is to automate everything. Automate the changes, automate the policies, automate the compliance. 
Fine. Let's just summarize here. So the world of networking is changing. And the world of network security, as a result of that, will change very drastically over the coming years because of things like cloud and SDN and virtualization. The complexity, which normally would have been, would have been uh, better because of these new modern platforms, is actually not, not improving because of the um, multi-vendor, multi-technology uh, platforms that we're going to have. So what can we do? Uh, first of all, we need to accept that we'll have a multi-vendor network, because that's the fact. Uh, we're going to have a lot of technologies there. They will live side by side. We will need to manage all these technologies. Um, and what we suggest to do is security policy orchestration, automate your networks end-to-end -end across all platforms. OK, just one thing, one more thing before I finish this. Um, Tufin is integrated with R80. So just in time for CPX, very proud uh, to be able to uh, uh, announce this today. So come over to our booth and see a demo of this whole automation solution and the integration with R80. Thank you very much. Have a great show.